you know, we always start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I want to welcome the uh, Boy Scout troop for being here. This is Troop, what, 210? Two, 220 and 219. There's a member from 219. 220 <laughs> and 219. Welcome. Welcome. We always start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I think Evie ought to come down here and lead us. How Would you do that? Okay. Take center stage right there. And you start us out. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Good job. What a proud mother. <laughs> okay. Um, Folks, did you have a chance to take a look at the Common Council uh, minutes for January the 25th? I, uh, <laughs> Shada, I did mention Ryan Chudinsky's name. That was one, and I could not remember it. I didn't write it down. So, Ryan Chudinsky, I will make a correction. Thank you. I should have emailed you. I, I started to email you and say, I knew you had another name. <laughs> Move to approve as correct. Right. We have a motion to approve as corrected by Goodman. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Smith. Those in favor? <coughs> and it's unanimous. Do we have somebody zooming in, by the way? Uh, I think the only one was uh, the Sentinel had requested his okay. to join us. Okay. But I don't know if Wes is on the hand. And of course, we have RTC in the back, right? How are we doing back there? Doing good. Second time here today. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, hey, hey. Uh, thank you for being here today. That was a red letter event. Appreciate your covering that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we have the Board of Public Works and Safety Minutes for information only, folks. Going down to communications and uh, speaking of the red letter day that we had today, uh, I want to read something for the uh, permanent records of the City Council. We normally do a proclamation and read it for the permanent minutes of the Board of Works. I think the event today was uh, big enough uh, that we need to do it at both places today and then Thursday. Today we proclaim that this is Marshall Fishback Day. Our heavyweight wrestler who won the state Saturday night. Marty, first time in 56 years. Burns Beck is somewhere jumping for joy right now. Yes, he is. Did you ever wrestle for him? Uh, he made me. The first, <laughs> the, I was on the first wrestling team in Rochester. He kept walking through the cafeteria taking bread off my plate, <laughs> saying you need to be at practice tonight. Yeah, he was. He started the program. He started the rest. Burns did. Burns, Burns did. Yes. yes. You know, I weighed a buck ten. I didn't see the advantage to be on the wrestling team. And since that time, I've seen a few practices, and it looks like boot camp. Coach Guard runs it. They don't stop for anything. So we we want to take a moment to put this in the official record. It's the. Uh, we had 40 wrestlers here today. We had uh, Marshall sitting here at the mayor's seat and the other three gentlemen who also wrestled at the state. They, were, they weren't successful, but they wrestled at the state. I said, Marshall, you're here and you're three posse. I said, it looks like Wyatt Earp and the four of you that took over the OK Corral, you know? And he says, who's Wyatt Earp? <laughs> Okay, be it known to all citizens of Rochester, Indiana, that the Honorable Theodore J. Denton, Mayor of Rochester, has proclaimed Tuesday, February the 22nd, in the year of our Lord 2022, Marshall Fishback Day. This honor is bestowed on Marshall in recognition of his being the first Rochester High School wrestler in the history of the sport to win a State of Indiana wrestling title. This accomplishment was achieved in Indianapolis on Saturday, February the 19th, as witnessed by his teammates, coaches, and numerous Rochester followers present as well as on television. This achievement complemented his senior wrestling record of 
45 wins and one loss, and a TRC conference title. Today and for years to come, Marshall is to receive his hometown's gratitude and admiration for his outstanding performance and continuing leadership. Respectfully presented this 22nd day of February by Theodore J. Denton, Mayor of Rochester, Indiana. And there were, like I say, 40 of his teammates here to support him, and uh, they were all assuring the mayor they'd be back next year. Okay. Public hearings. We go down, uh, we've got the second uh, reading for the personal property tax abatement for the power transmission components, LLC. And uh, I don't believe we need any more presentations so we just have to open it up uh, for a public hearing so I'll do that right now we'll open up a public hearing uh, any uh, any uh, questions or comments from the days uh, the, the, the power transmission folks are asking for a tax abatement to purchase the uh, Gertie buildings and uh, what to uh, refresh your memory is going to hire about 10 folks right away a uh, machinist uh, pretty decent paying jobs uh, we had the first reading if you remember the last meeting and now the public meeting anybody have any comments from the public Uh, if there are no further comments or discussion, I will entertain a motion to close the public meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Moved by Goodman, seconded by Garrett to close the meeting. Those in favor? And the meeting is closed. Unanimous shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I would entertain a motion for the second reading of the... Uh, no. Third. You have a, it's sorry, a third it's, reading. No. It's a confirmatory resolution, so it's a completely new resolution. The first one is the declaratory resolution okay. from January. This okay. is confirmatory. Okay. Okay, the, uh, the confirmatory resolution. Same number, isn't it? No, it's a different number. Okay. Resolution 3-2022. And you only have to read one time since My the title. Is that true? The motion is being made by Derek to read it one time by title only. I'll second. Seconded by Smith. Those in favor? Okay, sir, by title okay. only. Resolution number 3 2022, confirmatory resolution, application of power transmission components, LLC, for the designation of economic revitalization area and approval of tax abatement. Okay, those in favor of passing resolution 03 2022 signified by reason. I, I move for the adoption right, of sorry. resolution number 3 2022. Okay, second. Seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Okay, it's passed. So be it. Okay, the uh, old business that we have uh, is uh, council president and board appointments for council members. Uh, we're a little, a little late in the process here, but uh, anybody uh, have a motion for uh, the president's seat? I would move that Brian Goodman maintain the president's seat. And I'll second that. <laughs> okay. It's been moved and seconded. I can move we close the nomination. <laughs> <Second. laughs> okay, that's in favor of closing the nomination signified by raising your right hand. Oh, we have one abstention. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, those in favor then of uh, Brian Goodman continuing as council president, uh, raise your right hand. Okay. One abstention. Congratulations. Brian, did you abstain? I did. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, board appointments. Uh, anybody in want of changing their assignments or discussion on that. I don't I don't have any issues with any of the folks that have been covering anything. I don't know that I've heard from any of the committees or the boards or anything that you cover. 
think we need somebody else. It sounds like everything is copacetic. Do I have a motion to continue the, uh, the services for the board appointments as they now stand? So moved. Moved by Goodman. This is where he gets back to everybody. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? And it's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, new business. We have the 2021 area plan report. Uh, Heather is, was, she emailed and said she was not going to make it to town this time, but she did provide, and I gave printed copies this of her area plan. I just need to see how close to this. Okay. As far as her, what she provided, she said if any of the council, if you guys had any questions about her report, just to get in touch with her. I would uh, suggest to the council that we uh, we table the report and ask Heather to join us next month. I think it behooves us to have her here. Uh, I mean, she has not given her first report to us yet. We need to meet Heather and walk through that. Do, do I have a motion for that? I'll move to table. Marcus Smith moves to table until next meeting. Second. Second by Goodman. Those in favor? Okay, thank you all. I think that, I think that makes good sense. I will let her know. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, before we get into the uh, department reports, um, Boy Scouts back there. We've got, again, we've got uh, Troop 220 and Troop 219. 219. Anybody like to say something or, or tell us a little bit about uh, your scout activities and just why you're here tonight? It's a public meeting. Anyone's invited. Anybody? Why are you here tonight? No. Or citizenship of the community, stand up and tell them. Step right on up here. <laughs> Come on down. Now, when you were here last week, weren't you one of them that sat up here? No, you didn't get to sit up here. Where'd you sit? Clear over there? Okay. We had I'm clear, right? 40 of you here last week. Wasn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about the, the truth. Well, I was planning on going to get the winter starting thing. I can't remember. It's a brag, and I may have fell and slipped. Oh, you slipped. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you did you report that to your scout leader? Because I'm sure they have a very good insurance program. <laughs> <laughs> and they probably have a Smith Lawyer Smith. Did you write that down, Mark? <laughs> what you were doing here last Wednesday, what, what we talked about. Um, no, yet you got that in your notebook. Wasn't it the Constitution of the United States and the Ten Bill of Rights, right? Yeah. And we were, we were concentrating on the first, first one of the Bill of Rights, which was freedom of... Freedom of talking. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty close. <laughs> Back when they were putting this together, they said, they said now, Mr. Franklin, no, let's try speech. That sounds better. Freedom of speech. And there were three other freedoms, right? Freedom to Okay, freedom to assemble, wasn't there? Yeah, what that, that meant we could we could meet, right, and have meetings without worrying about somebody coming in saying you need to go home. You know, you can't do this, right? And uh, freedom to go where on Sundays? Church. Freedom of religion. Uh, what was the fourth one? Let me see if he can help you. Look over there, see if he can help you. How about the press? Freedom of the 
press. Right, right. Very good. It was, uh, yeah, about 40 of these youngsters right here. Uh, they're learning a lot. They, they, they're getting a lot of good stuff. And you scout leaders, you're doing a wonderful job. You really are. And uh, it's very impressive to me to hear some of the things these kids know. But again, we thank you very much. Anything else you want to share with us? Why, why are you here tonight? Because I'm here for a merit badge. Do you remember which merit badge? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> Citizenship of the... Citizenship of communications. For communications. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. She, okay. said it's, she said communications. Community. Oh, All yes. right. Thank you. Good Community. Yeah. Good job. It takes a lot to come up in front of a bunch of people like this. Let's <laughs> yes, it's going over to those tells the mayor, right? Okay, department reports. Chief Butler. Good evening. Thank you. For January 2022. Structure fires, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township, mutual aids, one in Mentone, one in Henry Township, one in Macy, vehicle fires, one in Rochester Township, auto fire alarms, one in the city, rush field fires, one in the city, calls for smoke, one in the city, accidents, two in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township, medical assist, 27 in the city, 12 in Rochester Township, three in Richland Township, gas leaks, one in the city, CO checks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, Canceled calls, three in the city, two in Henry Township for a total of 65 calls, and we conducted one night of drill training. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Anything for Chief? Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief Shots was supposed to be here this evening. Uh, got anybody sitting back? Yeah, we got Randy sitting over here. Randy, uh, stormwater projects and other projects? Uh, well, well, the street department plows snow. I got the community crossing application submitted for the main street sewer project. The uh, ADA ramp at Putts is in. They finished the handrails. So that's all in now. It's very nice, by the way. It looks great. Um, I did get a hold of Ted Redinger today and we're working on the permit. We're going to see about combining ours for the boring and theirs for the street lights. For the, for the NDOT. For the nine lights yeah. that we have left. And uh, the, the uh, proposed delivery dates April 19th for the light poles and March 8th for the lights themselves. So that's all I got right now. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. Waste treatment plant project from Long. Pretty well. Is Marcus sitting back back here? No. No. Okay. Moving along pretty good. We've got a uh, construction meeting coming up here in about a week. Yeah, it looked like they was putting the building up for their, or putting the roof on their one building for their bag, their dewatering bag. So, yeah, they're moving along. Um, Want to share the comments that uh, that you had uh, shared at the park board about our investigative work going on right now? I think we talked about it a little bit last week, but they kind of zeroed in on a range for what we need to do. Yeah, well, the Commonwealth's checking in on the, giving us three different scenarios for the pool on repairing it. They're um, Estimates about a two year lifespan if we leave it like it is now, and then it's going to really need major repairs. But the range is one and a half million to three million or four million, excuse me, to completely go through it. Yeah, one, one is a modest uh, you know, upgrade of everything that's, that's there currently, and the one on the other end is four million. Kind of reminded me of the sandals commercials, you know. <laughs> so it's going to be yeah, probably someplace in the middle of what they'll come up, be coming up with. Uh, we'll have to 
decide where we can get the money for that. We get some grant help and such, and there are some things available. There's a lot of money out there right now for things of this nature. Is that for, is that for just revamping it? Yeah. Uh, well, no, it's going from the, the, the less expensive side to revamp, changing the complexion of it completely. Uh, yeah, just the complexion of it, I, I don't, just, not just paint water, are you talking about restructure? Yeah. Structurally? Uh, yeah, bringing it into the world of what the pools look like. Today. There's, um, you know, we got a very, we got like an Olympic pool out there that's, uh, they're not put up together like that much anymore. And so, yeah come to us with uh, the pool, they've had some designers to look at it. come to us with some There's a lot of new things coming along that, that blend themselves more to the splash pad kind of world. Uh, so, and, uh, and the other thing that was quite interesting that will probably uh, may shock some people, but may not, because we used to have a high dive diving board, now a regular type of diving board, High dive diving board, as I understand it, was removed because of liability issues years ago. It's continued to get crazy in that world with the regular diving boards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're looking uh, the YMCA's and such have eliminated them, and uh, so you know the things they bring back to us will come in some of these cases, and hopefully what we end up with, we're able to find some money for, and we can put something in place that'll last another 50 years. But we're still working the due diligence, aren't we? Yeah. Well, Ted, and one of the big things is the filtration system. Filtration right. system. That is that is a, a big component big to component this to because it. we've been grandfathered in with our current system. Uh, but if we touch it to renovate it, and we we've known this for a while, we have to bring it up, we have to bring it up yeah. to our code. Yeah. So yeah. that is a big big sure. ticket right there. And items involved. <laughs> There's certain things you can't do, you know, and uh, so we're, we're going through all of those those hoops right now, but we'll, we'll have it all firmed up here probably in another month or so. But we've got some breathing room, but we don't have a lot of breathing room. Two years can go by pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, you want to tell them what you're doing with our small conference room? We do have a lot of, lot of projects on our plate. <coughs> Those of you who've been in the office and know we have a small conference room between Shada's office and mine, want to tell them what we're doing there? Well, we're putting up whiteboards, going to put the projects on them, which the reason they're not up is because one was bent and the other one, Dwayne and I, was out working on a unmantled part of the drive today, pretty much all day. Oh, I wasn't going to call you on the car for you. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 relax, Randy. Right? Yeah, I just wanted to tell the what our thoughts just came were there. today. Did it? Yes, so whenever. <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a big whiteboard that's going to go clear across one wall, and then two smaller boards that go on, on each end of the small conference room, and we've turned the table, so it's, well, shot, turn the table, so. I give you your props. I you don't need to give me credit. I yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you came in and told me I, you needed a little credit, so I'm giving it to I you. I did. So, yeah. You know. no. I so, uh, the council ever get invited in to see it? <laughs> well, yeah, when we get the whiteboards up, we'll bring you in. But uh, you're welcome we, to go look at it now. Oh, yeah. so big <laughs> well, we've accomplished a lot of things, but we've got about ten going right now that uh, involve. Uh, Ochre grants and uh, the community crossing grant for the project down on Main Street. And, you know, we've got several things going on, and we, we thought, okay, it's time that we put this together in a room where we can come in and take a look at everything, you know, right here in front of us and go over it. And the people involved can come and go and have meetings in there, trying to spread out back there and talk about numerous things. We'll have it right there. So bring a little organization to it, aren't we? Yeah. We're getting that busy. And you're doing a great job. You really are. I didn't want to bust your chops at all. You get that when you get it. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for Randy? Randy, do you know if uh, Marcus received the parts from Airbac yet for the vacuum system? Uh, no, I don't. I'm still waiting on it. I don't know whether he got them or not. Yeah. 
we are we are having some meetings in regards to that issue as well. Um, I'll have to let you let you know what's happening there. Okay, thank you, Randy. Uh, Wayne, Street Department and the Parks Department. Really haven't done too much uh, this month except push snow, keep the streets cleared, and uh, appreciate the uh, the public has been very patient with us, and we've had a lot of uh, positive feedback. Uh, there's been a few places we missed, but overall, it's been so far. It's been a good winter, and um, been helping Randy with a lot of the same things that he mentioned um, for the park. Uh, we're you want you want to elaborate a little bit on what we're doing in the snow removal world? We're we're getting another uh, plow, if you will. Right. It's going to allow us to have all of our manpower tack tackle these things. When we had the big snow, this last big snow, we got a foot of snow. Uh, Dwayne uh, called a meeting, and we all met the Monday before the big snow. Everybody, Tom was there, everybody, and we put together a manning list of all the equipment we had that could push snow and uh, the personnel who could, who could handle each and And we've, we've grown uh, way away from, well, that's not my department. These gentlemen uh, all work very well together and we had uh, people furloughed the, the street department to push snow when we needed to do it with their equipment. So we put that all together, and then when it came, uh, he had a plan of attack, and he did it very well. It worked very well. Uh, and really has brought some, uh, Dwayne has brought some uh, uh, order to, to that kind of thing, to be proactive. And you did a good job. Thank you. You've also opened up a new world of beet juice, right? Actually, we're working on some of that right now. Um, a lot of what well, you see, like with the state highway, um, they're using liquid de-icer. Um, it's basically uh, salt brine um, that they're putting down. We also add what's called beet juice. It's a, actually a byproduct of uh, ship making sugar through beets. It's what's left over. Is, um, actually, they found is a good anti-icing, the de-icing component uh, that we use and so we're right in the kind of education stage right now doing fact finding and putting some numbers together I think in the future what uh, we envision seeing is is using more liquid uh, less hard material that uh, is going to save us on salt um, it's also going to reduce the amount of salt that gets put down on the street so that on the environmental side, that's going to help with that. So it'll also reduce the amount of sand, and uh, so there'll be more to come on that. But we're just in the initial stages of, of going through all that. We, we have used beet juice for about a year. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a couple different types of beet juice. The beet juice we have used, you mix with your salt and your sand and spread right. it, and uh, you get some better melting properties for ice and snow and intersections and such we've used it a lot but when you see a state highway or uh, the state road where it's completely clear you know there's no snow there's nothing they're using this in a liquefied form more of a liquefied form and they just spray it out and uh, it is a little pricey but it uh, we kind of looked at the fact that if we could utilize some of that throughout our town, we'd cut down on the man hours. And uh, so they're doing their study right now. We're doing it in concert with John Geyer. Um, John is very interested in it as well. And the guys are working with John, and we're sharing our information, and we're also sharing uh, thoughts on how to apply the beet juice. You can't have six guys up there with a Hudson sprayer. <laughs> that just doesn't work. So uh, that investigation is going on right now. And these kind of things uh, only make our street department more and more efficient as we continue to move what they have to do. I thank you for that. 
doing good stuff. Thanks. Thank you. Anything on the parts? We're uh, supposed to receive a new tractor and a 12-foot mower this spring. That's going to cut down on our man hours for mowing. It's also going to reduce the number of mowers we need. And so uh, we'll get that in May time frame, and they'll have that delivered to us, and then we can knock out uh, summer mowing better, quicker, cheaper than what we have, plus equipment. One of the uh, projects that we're into now, and the, the way we just completed, you might say like phase one, we decided, to, as we reported to you folks, to take on the duties of Minnow Creek. And that's going to be included in our storm water program and in our storm water utility. And we're working with the folks at Okra uh, and our Commonwealth engineering folks on a revamp of Minnow Creek. Clear, clear out. So that uh, the flooding and such that has gone on for years there for our residents along the we're going to alleviate all that. Um, in this investigation, we found out that your ditch assessments, uh, none of them went to Minnow Min Creek, they all went to Mill Creek. So we're, we're going to jump on this. Uh, some of the ARPA money is going to be used, but the first phase, we, uh, if we did what? We spent uh, a couple thousand dollars to... Right. We cleaned out around behind Riddle School at the uh, culverts to go over the bridge to tie both the uh, properties together for Riddle School. Uh, we cleaned that out and um, did an assessment of the culverts there. And now it's with Commonwealth. So we're looking at uh, replacing culverts at 6th Street and also behind Riddle School so that we can increase the flow through Minnow Creek. Yeah, the first, the first stage was clip cleaning, they were pulling out stuff that was in there. And we wanted to do that before we got this huge snow. So we did, and now we're starting to see some of the benefits of it. It's flowing pretty right. good. <laughs> and up until then, it was flowing all right, right out to somebody's yard. So that's going on. That's, that's huge. That's huge. Thank you guys for, for doing that. We just talk about projects and what we need to do. All of a sudden, you turn around, and between these two, they've got a moving going on. Anything else? Just want to give a shout out to our other departments: fire department, wastewater, and the uh, water department. They really helped out and with the snow and everything. And Tom really is the one that initiated our our meeting for the uh, plan. Um, he's the one that. Well, you really told me it was you. <laughs> we, I okay. may have said we need to have it, but it was Tom that actually pushed my button to get that going. So, well, and Tom got you set up with cots and stuff right. over at the plant. So, if people want to stay because they really have to be back in a few hours, we had the facilities ready to do that. Anybody utilize the fire station for a warming center, Tom? No, we didn't have that. that uh, the need we unfortunately the storm wasn't that bad uh, there, no, there was no yeah. loss of power like a couple of years ago when we had the ice storm when we had less lost power um, we set up and it wasn't utilized neither was the school but i did communicate with uh, the superintendent and we were both on standby should we needed to um, pull the trigger if we would have had maybe a, a catastrophic accident like you've seen on other places on 31, if that would happen here, we could have had a place to shelter people in place. Uh, but fortunately, there, there wasn't no need, but we did have a plan um, in place waiting to execute. Got with the EMA, so we had the Red Cross cots, blankets, instead of in two facilities, but ne nothing was needed, so we stood that down. Okay. Great. Anything else? All good. Okay, Marcus was going to be here tonight. Derek is not here this evening. He's not on vacation, but they're, they're still wrestling. So. Okay, go on down to reports of committees. Uh, RDP, nobody here from RDP. We haven't heard from Harry for a long time, have we? Well, we ought to reach out to him and see you know, what's happened. Uh, 
Ellen May, and there's another. We haven't heard from David Heidi for a while. Anybody called to get on the agenda for the next? No? Okay. Ruth is not here. Fedco. Ryan Goodman. <coughs> All right. Fedco met February 11th. Um, we welcome new board member Ryan Mulligan, um, replacing Jane Murphy. Her, her uh, time was up and she elected not to re up, so he's taking her spot. Just a question is Ryan from Akron? Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Coke was voted the publicity and data co chair on the board. We went ahead and signed a contract with the consultant um, to help us in the restructuring that we're, we're looking at. The work on Black Air continues. Um, we had to, we, we signed the contract to get the water pipe finished. Um, the price of that was going up by the day and availability was pretty rough. So um, we signed the contract and just on the paper, the county allocated funds to help complete that project. Uh, the next obstacle we're looking at is NIP, with NIPSCO, the gas lines. Um, but we have sold sold lots. There's some more lots available to be sold, and so there was income coming from there. Um, you sold one lot, not lots. One lot. No, there's another one. Right, there's two more. Nope, paper is a lot. Right, I'm talking about two other lots other than Nope. Okay. There's another. Got one. money on the table. It's, it's in our funds and I think the uh, agreement has been signed. Okay. Or I could be making it up to make myself look good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tiffany has uh, reported that the hiring committee has posted the Fedco job. Um, it's online and with the Sentinel. And we did the resolution tonight for b and um, moving in. So any, any other questions? That's my report. Okay. So any questions for Brian? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, the Redevelopment Commission uh, meets in the morning uh, at 8.30. Uh, Attorney Perkins has been invited to come. Uh, we're, we're elevating uh, the, the status and, and the work of the Redevelopment Commission. As you know, we've been working with our own uh, economic development consultant now for a little while. Uh, some of the things that are going to happen tomorrow, the new president, Brett, uh, Brett uh, Kula, has uh, asked the board to bring their three uh, choices for projects they believe we need to take a look at from the Redevelopment Commission state. I would like to engage the Redevelopment Commission to help us with our ordinance. Packages uh, here at the city. We have not had any activity in looking at ordinances for some time. We've had a committee going to look at that, put some suggestions together for this council to act on. And Attorney Perkins is coming to discuss the possibilities of an ordinance court after we do that. Uh, we have lots of properties throughout our town community that we deal with on a almost regular basis trying to clean up Rochester. And our ordinances and such are so outdated that there's very little statutory scale. And we talked about this what, my first year in office. Andy? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And uh, Andy did some research. He said the other communities, they, they pretty much established ordinance courts. And there are, there's, you know, it's like a small claims where people have to go and, and uh, face uh, the situation. And, you know, it, it, when you get somebody who's sitting in the middle of a neighborhood like that, it isn't fair to the neighbors to be pulling down the value of their property because somebody doesn't want to keep theirs in order. So that, uh, that's going to be talked about the Redevelopment Commission tomorrow. Um, okay, Park Board, Chase. No report for me. Okay, good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Rochester BZA and Council on Aging, Councilman Smith. Sure. Mine will be brief as well because both of my groups are meeting after tonight's meeting. So uh, BZA tomorrow night has one thing on the agenda. It's a the guy wants to put a second story on his garage, which is going to be taller than the house, which is not permissible. Yeah, so he needs a variance for that. And uh, the other thing I would say about the BZA, that these people uh, have uh, been earning their <coughs> dues and have been doing a great job. And uh, it's a testimony. They've, they've been busy and they've been working hard. So. Uh, they're doing a good job. As far as Council on Aging, we meet uh, next Monday because we meet the fourth Monday of the month. So, have not seen that agenda. I don't know what's going to be on that. But, uh, barring questions, that's the that's my report. Your uh, your comments about the yeoman's duty that they've been doing us are well taken. Um, made mention at the legislative breakfast last Saturday that uh, there were questions about the project at the south end of town, the Meadows project, the 660 low-income apartments that uh, and then they talked about duplexes and such. Our BCA, I was so proud of our BCA. They did their due diligence. Yes, they did. They uh, knew the comprehensive plan that had been put together and made the, the right decisions five to nothing to turn down the exception request for the low-income housing. And I was very proud of that group. They, they did their investigation for it before coming. They didn't have to table anything. Very good. Yep, yep. Okay, any, uh, <clears throat> any questions for Marty? Thank you, Marty. Yep. Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center. Todd's not here. Any, uh, did you hear anything? from him on whether he was still here or not. Yeah, he, I, I told you that. He, oh, no, you weren't in here when I, I told the other council. Yeah, Quit he, doing that. To <laughs> Sorry. Jeepers, she does that all the time. I told you but many times 10 minutes later. You know, you weren't in the room. <laughs> yeah, no, most of the time you're in the room. You just choose to select a period. Um, but no, he was traveling, and he had emailed and said that he did not think he would be back in time. Okay, okay. Already a tree board and EMS, Councilman Fitzwater. No EMS report and the tree board because of numerous illnesses did not meet. Yeah, I saw that uh, that blurb. Everybody okay? Any turn on for five next month? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Three the news. You know, these days <laughs> these days you don't know, you know. It's okay, water board, Thank Councilman you. Garrett. Had a brief meeting, very brief. The most important thing is that everything's running exceptionally well. The water board, uh, really the main update that they had was that uh, they're still uh, discussing and having some other plans on that back wall. We're having some problems with it. We've got people coming in and there's a way that we can go and build another wall in front of that wall. It's leaking. And so they're going to dig down and kind of put a little drain in there, as I understand, and then and build up maybe eight or ten feet. And they're, Working with this and getting the funds around to do it, not quite sure what it's going to cost. It's not going to be cheap, but it's going to be better than tearing the whole wall out and you know and what all that would endure. So we think that that's going to be done, you know, in the, in the next few months. Uh, they approved uh, the outstanding checks of three hundred fifty dollars and fifty cents, and uh, like I say, the plant was running well, and. Uh, we just uh, have everything going good, and that's it for the water department for this month. You know, Derek kind of concerns me because you know he is a history buff. He keeps referring to that as the Great Wall, and I'm not a little bit concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, but it does. It definitely there's. I, I yeah. was out there, and I was out there walking around on it. And it it's going to need some attention. Um, It'll be done. And we've had some. Just it hasn't made the, the board meeting yet. But we've had some preliminary discussions with the engineer folks on the uh, couple of water mains and a couple of the housing additions where we decided to use some ARPA funds to loop those things and we're still doing some engineering due diligence there so that that's progressing ahead also 
that's yet to come. Yet to come, yes, sir. Thank you much, John. Any questions for John? Okay. Uh, any uh, any legal issues, uh, Andy? I, I do not have any. Okay. That's always good to hear. <laughs> ADA concerns, Shada? None that have been brought to my attention. Okay. Randy? Any Randy? ADA? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good as well. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. by Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.